Hey, welcome to In The Zone. Dave Delgado here in studio. Carl Dodd, head coach of the Mattel Guam Men's National uh, Football Team. And coach, big game, Mattel taking on Maldives at the GFA National Training Center. So first off, let's talk about preparation. Uh, yeah. we, we talked about that before. You got the guys at Leo Palace getting focused. Uh, what else have uh, you guys done on the uh, GFA side to get these guys ready? Just providing uh, the training facilities for one. I mean, we've been training four or five times a week plus gym at the at the GFA, and then they've been great getting us set up at the Leo Palace, having all the players come in uh, four in a room, which is great for team camaraderie and bonding, and uh, just removing those distractions that they might have from home or from nicer places in Tumon at the beach or that. So just trying to get them really focused for this game. And the technical stuff, the in yeah. the classroom, the on the field mm-hmm. stuff, and game planning and strategizing yeah a lot of that a lot of that and it's now becoming a lot more player driven i mean they're the learners they're the ones who've got to go out on the pitch and, and deliver that it's it's not myself so our job is to facilitate that environment and help create that but like i said it's very player centered so they've been really good in terms of driving that and taking ownership and that's what we want as a group yeah let's talk about the momentum yeah. uh the last time the Mattel played a home match big yeah. win over yeah. bhutan uh team captain jason cunliffe three goals <clears throat> in that game and for a player that has the most caps in, in Guam uh, history, uh, says a lot for him and, and his work ethic. It does. He's a, a, a great leader and I think a role model for players. If, if you want to look at hard work and consistency in someone that turns up and gives everything for the shirt and for the island, you know, you couldn't go further than Jason Cunliffe. You know, it's excellent just to have him around and I think the younger players just look up to him as a god and so he should be respected I think the number of caps he's had and any other national team that's what you know equates to well over 100 he's, you know he served his island well and I think he's enjoy- This is he's really enjoying his football and he's got plenty of years left in him the way he looks after his body how hard he trains how fit he is you know, it's testament to himself. He's, got, he's definitely be here for this cycle, that's for sure. And a lot goes on into getting these players ready. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the uh, the vice that they have strapped on their chest to, yeah. to mark everything as far as uh, heart rate. Um, they even have an app where sure. it asks them questions mm-hmm. about how they slept. Okay. And how important is that to making sure that these athletes are in tip-top shape and ready for competition? Yeah, but these start to become the one percenters or even bigger ten percenters. So, you know, load monitoring is a big one where they use the heart rates and GPS so we can track how they're training. So we be a lot more specific. So it's really adding that professionalism to, to the team and the island. So we're improving that. And then we also have Coach Me Plus, which is checking up on their sleep, their mood, their wellness, everything like that to check that we're on track, that we're training them at the right amount, not too hard, not too, too easy. But it's also looking after them. So it's becoming a lot more specific and in line with professional level. And that's what we're after. And that also funnels down through all the national teams with the women's side as well and the junior teams. So it's really grown the program. But it is key because, like I said, that's, they're those 10 percenters, those 1 percenters that get you through the game, reduces the risk of injury, maximizes performance. You know, it all adds up in the end. And what do we know about Maldives? Um, yeah. We had Jill on the radio and she said that Maldives is – 20 plus uh, spots ab- above yeah. the Mattel, but uh, heading into uh, the big game at the GFA, um, what can we expect from uh, that team? Yeah, um, yeah, they are higher mm-hmm. ranked. I mean, the, there's a new ranking system which isn't very favorable for teams lower down, but you know, what we just see every game as a challenge. Let's test ourselves, let's see where we're at, let's see where our philosophy is at, and we're looking for that continual improvement. I mean, the boys were fantastic against Bhutan. The, the performance they put on there in front of their family and friends was amazing. And they know they can play well on the island. That, that's a huge plus. So we're looking to bring that into the game today against the Maldives. And, yeah, they know what they're doing. We've, we've prepared well enough. But you should expect, hopefully, an exciting attacking game where we win convincingly. Yeah, home field advantage, definitely a yeah. plus. The crowd, the weather. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you said it yourself. It's not going to be too much of a factor because Maldives is also another island nation as well. Yeah, correct. But, I mean, at the end of the day... It's gonna, we're going to have to go away, you know, play away games, and we won't have an advantage. So it all comes back down to your preparation, our structures, our philosophy, how, how much we're willing to go out there and give 100%, you know, all those basics. That's what it comes down to. And I think we're in a very good place. And regardless, the sun's not out tomorrow. Even if it's raining, it's not going to matter. The boys are ready to go. So. Well, what is going to matter is the people of Guam coming out to the game at 3.30 at the GFA National Training Center. If you didn't get your tickets, you better get it now and, and come out and show your support. But, 
Coach, going back sure. to you, let, let's talk about your history with the sport of uh, <clears throat> soccer and, and how you got your start, where you yeah. were as a player uh, yeah. playing professional. Well, you know, it's, it's funny. We talk about Guam mm -hmm. being an underdog. I had a very similar upbringing, you know, where I was born and uh, there was only one professional team in my state, mm -hmm. big region, you know, so competition for spots was very hard. So I didn't make my professional debut till I was about 21. So it was a lot of hard work, a lot of patience and, and persistence. And, th and that was key. And that's something that's been ingrained in, in myself as a, you know, as a player, but also as a coach, that work ethic. Um, so I was very fortunate with that. Played professionally in Australia, got to go overseas into Scotland. I played in Hong Kong for a little bit and then yeah, back to Australia and, and then moved into the coaching realm. I mean, I'd been chipping away at that for well, whilst I was playing. You know, you can't play forever, unfortunately, but uh, was ready to go transition to that. And I, and I love the coaching aspect. Like, it's, it's fantastic. And, I, and these bunch of guys that we're training now, they're, they're great. They're yeah, great to work with. Let's talk about how you got involved with the sure. Mattel and, yeah. and made that transition from uh, coaching overseas sure. to coming to such a small island. Well, I think the attraction was, was an international, at international level, an international team. I mean, to be honest, I didn't know too much about Guam. You know, I know that in Australia we'd played them before in an EAFF game. Didn't know where it was situated, so I did a fair bit of research I had a, a friend who was a technical director here and Linda Wilson, she mentioned, you know, throw your hat in the ring for the job and it took me a while. I was like, well, I've never worked in international football before. You know, it's a lot different to club. I was, I was very hesitant about it and I think that persistence of her, can, you know, staying on me, like throw your hat in, throw your hat in and we, I th eventually threw it in. I thought, why not? Let's give it a go and I think it got down to four people. We had the interviews and they must have liked what I said and then before I knew it, I was over here in, in January last year and, and it's, it's been great ever since. I, I haven't looked back once. And hats off to everything that has been going on at the GFA. Yeah. One, uh, definitely with the certification with coaches because um, really teaching the game at the grassroots yeah. level with the kids, but also making sure that um, the coaches from each club and, and everybody involved with soccer in general um, takes these courses and earns certificates towards making the game better. Yeah, I, I think that maybe the GFA had a had a reflection period and, and just you know decided where we where they want to go and you know, one of the reasons I was brought in as well it's it's to helping with that program design you know, with the national team programs there's a, it's a structured environment where these kids are coming in in a full time environment training four or five times a week uh, learning about nutrition diet you know weightlifting you know strength sorry strength and conditioning and how to be a professional look after themselves. So that's one aspect, but yeah, you're right. It's the coaching is the biggest one. You know, these kids are limited by how good the coaches are on the island. I mean, they're the ones teaching them how to play. So we owe it to the kids, and that's what I say to anyone that's coaching out there. You need to get accredited. Like, what do it for the kids? You know, it's free. There's courses on all the time. Get in there. Help. Let's help grow the island and the programs for the kids coming through. And that's gonna that's gonna leave us in a lot better place down the track. Yeah, and, and how excited are you to see these? Uh, next wave uh, of young athletes. I yeah. mean, you, you talk about the national team level and the program in general. Yeah. This is where all these kids are going to end up going. That's exactly it. This is the pinnacle, the senior teams, whether it's the Matau or the Massacata, they, you know, that's what they're looking at and that's what they should be training for. And That pride in the shirt's got to be there. So these kids are there training every day and it's great now that they have these competitions that they don't have to pay for. They're funded by us. You know, the FIFA gives us funding, AFC gives us funding. So we're, we're about to have the under-16s go to Singapore in September at the end, after this so that these guys have been training for over a year and a half now so it's going to be great to see how we go on the international stage for them and then we have the 19s in November this is for the males it's a male year so next year we have the females competitions so it's fantastic to see how they go and, and they learn so much and you know just to get off the island have that exposure is huge you know that's one thing I've noticed that we don't we, it's hard for us to get off the island you know and get that exposure and, and have that check with the rest of where we at in the world stage because we know we're at in the Guam stage. We compare ourselves, you know, the big fish, small pond kind of scenario. But where are we at in the world stage? And that's where we want to get to. That's the level we want to get the bar up to. So it's it's great. And like I said, it's it really exciting what's coming through in this program with the players, with the younger ones. So Maldives, yeah. what, can a game, what, what kind of game can we expect uh, yeah. at the GFA? An exciting one. I, I, would, I would imagine you've got two islands going at it. You know, nothing to lose, small nations. You know, they've got that underdog tag, so it's it's going to be a good contest, that's for sure. And we just hope that our quality and our training and our preparation shines through and we come home with our wet sail and we have three points. 
and after the Maldives game, yeah. uh, it's a quick turnaround because we're Very hosting quick, yeah. uh, the Philippines. The Philippines, yeah. So another close nation, uh, a lot of Filipino people living here as well. So we're expecting another big crowd or even bigger crowd for that one. So it's great for the island to get these types of games. You know, it's, it's been a long time, barring the Bhutan game, since we've had games on the island, and we need more of that. So this is a great opportunity for everyone to come out, for all those kids as well, like everyone come and support the Matau and get behind the island. I think that's a, a great thing that you bring up because after the game, we get all the club teams, all the yeah. kids wearing their different jerseys, and they all hang out, and they're waiting to get autographs by all the national team members. Yeah, it's, we have to give back, and the players love giving back. We, saw, we went out to a wings training that we were at Leo Palace the other day. We got a strikers one this afternoon. Oh, sorry, yesterday. And then, you know, another wings one next week, and you know, we're just trying to get out there and give back, and the kids love it. It's great to see their idols, you know, how they look up and how you know, endearing they are. They just listen. And they love it. So you know, it's a really good feeling giving back and helping those next kids come through. You know. All right. Well, make sure you check out the game kickoff schedule for 3.30. Guam, the Matau men's national team taking on Maldives at the GFA National Training Center.